Hey, it's me again. You know what's fucked up? When you're a hardworking person and everybody in your corner that help you want something in return, even though they say they're helping for the Lord, they're helping for their blessings, they help it because it's their job. They want something back. For instance, Mostly every man in my life use me. And why I say use me? Because since my father I'm spurned on my mother was he the man who helped me make me but not raise me or take care of me. Every time he got a new woman in his life, he can't get me. But when he was with them, I never seen them. One thing I seen them when he sleep, when he come home to his mother house for my night out. Even the pastor at the church had a sleepover. He brought me in the bathroom and made me give him all the sex. I was only seven years old. It was fucked up. Even my grandmother next door neighbor. For me to get the candy. Not even knowing. It was for me to do. All the sex. As I grew up, it was more men and more men and more boys. I got tired of fighting. I got tired of telling someone that wasn't listening. And so a point one, one time in my life, I was eight years old and a couple of boys raped these girls in the house when we was playing it at. And one of the girls was so little, and I did not want her to go through the nightmares I go through. So I told him to take me. So he pushed her in a hole, and he raped me. It was teenage boys. Very naive. By me always telling somebody when I was young, when my grandmother asked me. What was wrong? I never said nothing. She knew I never sleep by myself because I was afraid of the dark. Because that's when it happened. Every time someone touched me, it was dark. So I never liked it being a dog. That night I slept in the bed and cried and cried. So I fell to sleep. I heard a knock on the door. It was the police. My grandmother turned to me and asked me, what did I do? Because I was kind of bad, though. I did fight a lot because I had so much anger inside. I told her what happened. I was so afraid that I'd get a whooping. Or oh, I'd be in trouble. Because back then, my mom used to beat me a lot. If my sister didn't do something wrong, I'd get whooping. If I not tell the truth, I get a whooping. That's why I always ran away to my grandmother's house because I felt safe. Never thinking that some bad would really happen. I told her what happened, and it was the first time someone stand up for me. Part of my uncle getting out there in rage. Ready to hurt someone. I ain't feel too afraid. But every time I went to someone else's house, I'm not going to say the clothes though. This young man always wake me up. No one have to have sex with him. Oh, he told me. He's going to lie on me and get me in trouble and give me a whooping. And I hated it. And I know my mom would never believe me. So 
Or I'll just let him do it. Everyone from neighbors to brothers to friends or the brother. So a point that I said, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I'm just tired of saying no. I'm just tired of saying stop. I'm just tired of crying. I'll just let you do it. <laughs> Having people who took advantage of me just bothered me up and balled up in my life and just made me so angry because when someone tells me something or do something, I just like, I fight. I fight them. I beat the shit out of them just because I'm so angry. Even growing up, I thought it would stop. Even the cops are rapes. Got raped by a cop at the age of 16. He told me to choose if I want to go home or go to Juvie and lie and say I did something else. He made me perform oral sex right down the street from the jailhouse. I cried. Even walking home, they threatened me with curfew to bring me back to jail. Why well, they brought me to big jail the first time? Why well, they had weird women in there taking pills out their vagina? Coughing up blood, detoxing. Didn't know what it was at first. I just wanted to get out. I told myself I'd never go back. I would do whatever I have to do. He brought me to a house in the east. Handcuffed me. Recording of having sex. You know, I was a little girl. I guess you get off on it. Make no sense to tell my mom my grandmother was dead. That was the only person to fit me. Just go home and act like nothing happened. It was something normal to me. By now, 16. Been going on for the longest since five. I just wish one day it stops. And I just was like, fuck it. I just started selling my soul, sleeping with different people for money. Didn't give a fuck. They taking it. I might as well make a living off it. <laughs> Got older. I had my first child, was homeless. I thought I finally found somebody that was really there to help me. Not believing what the other girls say. You have to sleep with him for help. I was like, no, he didn't come at me that way. He really wanted to help me. That's how I felt. I block all the negative activities and words that they said about me. And believing in somebody, a male figure. But it was false. Even my case man wanted a favor for a favor. That's what he called it. I help you, you help me. But at the present time in life, I got tired of sleeping with this man, doing things that I didn't want to do. I want to live my own life. I, I still felt like I was trapped. They had no one to talk to. They had no one to tell. Because I felt like I was going to be back on the street with a child. And I was doing so well. Going to school and working, and I have a roof over my head. I had too much to lose, so I sucked my tears up and kept going. Finally, found a real man in my life that really wanted me and my child. Told him I had to stop, so he told me I couldn't have housing with me. But before that, I went to jail. 
Dad, I was in bed because I told my mom I was in He was there. For a man to say he's a man of God, preaching the word every Sunday, having a family of his own. Mm. People say the devil disguised himself as an angel. And that's what he was. He told me for me to get back in that program, I had to have sex with him. And deep inside, I did not want to. I was like, forget it. I'm tired of selling my soul. But I had nothing else. I knew it was hard out there because I was convicted felon. I had one child. And I wasn't stable anymore. And that's all I had. To get that way back. A child. So I slept with him for one last time. Then he tried to use certain things against me. I told him it was no more. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm tired of selling my soul. But he said, I can help you. You know, it's always a favor for a favor. I'll give you a voucher to suck my dick. I say no, I'm good. And it seemed like he was addicted to sex because he never stopped. He kept coming towards me, kept coming towards me, so I snapped. And I broke down. And it was a woman. A woman who asked me, is I'm okay? And I really didn't talk to too many people about my problems because why? Too many times I told someone what was wrong with me or what was going on with me and they took that for advantage. Took that for use. In the wrong way. So she told me she could help me and I let her. Because I really felt like I could trust her. She did, but the plan left. It might have been a man in charge. Things didn't go right. Next day, I was being bullied at work. They call her right. Call her hater. They call her bitch. They call her fake. Really felt bad. Even though I had a private meeting before that. But things didn't go right. They didn't care, they were just covering their ass. And it was messed up. And it's like, there's so many girls in this world, there's many used and abused by these men. But there's higher authority. And we don't have no one to go to. No one to say. And it's so sad. Then we keep being judged just from our past. Or we trying to run from our past and we just keep coming back. Let's keep hurting us. Just like a few months ago. My boss, Miss Glenda, told me some hurtful shit. Why she put me on leave. She told me I must have learned from in jail because she followed me out the door after I clocked out. After she told me to go home. Kept following me, kept nagging me, kept nagging me, kept pushing me, kept pushing me. And I stayed quiet for so long, I stayed strong for so long until I turned and snapped and I blacked out and said, kiss my ass. But I really didn't mean it. But she followed me and kept telling me I keep pushing me. Pushing me, and I wasn't pushing me. I'm following the orders because I love my job. Um, as time went on, we kind of were a little bit withdrawn. 
after having a meeting with her, I just been feeling so bad because I feel like I just keep failing. Even though I keep keep helping somebody, saving somebody, no one ever saved me. You will tell me I'm a hard worker. Tell me I'm your best worker. Tell me one day I could be running this and then turn around and tell me that I need a psychiatrist. I need medication. I learned stuff from jail just because I told you my past or you knew most of it. There's not no way to judge someone. She insults people almost every day and that they want to be done to her. If you know the secrets of this company, you will be sick to your stomach. How many sexual harassments? How many perverts? Your son or daughter might be there and begin touching the appropriately, begin to raise or put down or insult it. It's not the way to go. Because I know I've been in these shoes. I'm still in these shoes. Even though my shoes is not that rusted and bucket like when I first walked in, it got a little shine, but it's not all the way polished. You should not be treated like that. But who cares? We just a story. We just something that gets a donation. We just something that be walked on and passed through. We just like that little mirror that no one really remember. But they can just picture your face. Not even sometimes, not even that. It's fucked up. It's just a cold world. It's not just bullets killing people. It's words too. The words and how you treat a person may be the death of them. But you don't look at it like that. Just say the bullets is killing people. But a lot of things is violence if you open your eyes and open your ears. You understand where it's a true violence.